we have been bombarded. We have been bombarded by traditional medicine, by doctors, by insurance companies, by the pharmaceutical companies into thinking that healing is outside of our power. Now, I got some stats for you and I want to read these. Check this out. The average doctor visit is seven minutes long. The average woman with pelvic issues sees a minimum of five doctors before she gets a um, diagnosis, a proper diagnosis. When a woman seeks help for her pelvic issue, 50% of them are dissatisfied with their care, right? And this is really interesting. 35% of people, men and women, go online after their doctor's visit, right? Because they're unhappy with their doctor's performance, okay? Now, as women, we have been dismissed, misdiagnosed, marginalized, and women, many times when they seek help for their pelvic issues, are told they're stressed, are told they're hysterical, are basically told to go and sit in the corner. This has happened to me. Maybe this has happened to you too. If it has, hit me with a comment here and let me know, okay? Now, so many women that I've treated over the last 12 years spent thousands and thousands of dollars on what I call the Dr. Rose Show. And after treating so many women with these issues, I've come up with a solution for you, okay? So all is not lost, okay? I have developed um, a checklist that I've given to many of the women who have come to see me in my clinic in New York City and that I use myself, and this is called Get your doctor to listen to you, okay? Very important checklist because it took years for me to stand up for myself. And for some of you out there, it's taking years for you to stand up for yourself in your doctor's office, okay? Now, if you want the checklist, um, type in the word Rose Show, and then my team has this whole thing figured out where you're going to get it delivered, okay? Type in the ro uh, um, Rose Show. and this checklist that I created is how to get your doctor to listen to you. Because at the end of the day, we want to work in partnership with our caregivers. We don't want them to be one over us because the guru lies within you. The guru is not external to you. The doctor is not external to you. Okay, tap in the word comments. Hi, everyone. Isa Herrera here, just in case you don't know me. I have some people here on Instagram also. I am a pelvic healer. I am the author of five books. And my mission is to help women heal from pelvic floor dysfunction and have happy vaginas and bladders and to take back their power and to reclaim their crown and keep it on, okay? Now, if you don't have time to listen to this, because I know a lot of people don't, um, just hit the share button so it goes on your timeline. And I think when you hit the share button, then you can find it later on because sometimes it disappears into the abyss. So that's really amazing. Oh, my God. I already see a bunch of hearts. Welcome, everyone. Oh, my God. There's so many people here. I love it. Everyone's typing in Rose Show. Yes, the revolution has begun. Okay. Now, let's face it. Okay, I'm gonna get a little a little harsh here, and I don't want to go into a crazy rant like I like I normally go into. But listen, some of us have been treated like pin cushions by our doctors. I was treated like a pin cushion. Okay, hit and miss therapies that didn't work, injections that were horrible, medications that made me feel worse than the condition I actually came in with. Right, right. We get misdiagnosed all the time, which is why we need to take back our power in the doctor's office and be in partnership, not one over the other, but together, because this is the way that we free ourselves. This is the way that we open the, the, the door to our cages that many of us are in because we suffer from leaking pelvic organ prolapse and pelvic pain. And we think that there's nothing that we can do for ourselves to heal ourselves. And you know what? That is wrong. Okay, there's a ton of things that you can do yourself. And I'm actually going to have a master class on this is coming up. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. Now, this is something else that I thought was really incredible. And I want to share with everybody here, right? Women are seven times more likely to be sent home mid heart attack from the ER. Not men though. Men get treatment, but not women. We're sent home. Why? Because 
this is a prime example of gender bias medicine. This is an example of why women are sick with bad medicine, okay? So today I'm going to share with you some of the things that got me off the Dr. Rose Show. And by the way, oh, I spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on the Dr. Rose Show because I didn't know. And you don't know what you don't know, right? There wasn't people like me on the internet doing Facebook Lives, bringing the information out there so women can heal. My mission is to help 1 million women heal from pelvic floor dysfunction. And the only way I can do this is to help you awaken the doctor within you, which is already there, right? You only need a little bit of guidance and then you can take it from there, right? So the step step one, I'm going to go through five steps, okay? Step one is my favorite. Step one is the white coat effect. You know, have you ever wondered why doctors wear white coats? It's really interesting because when I was doing the research, I found out so many things about the white coat. It's a real thing and it does exist. It's been proven in the research that when a doctor wears a white coat, check this out, his authority increases. I was going to wear my white lab coat, but I don't know where it was. We trust them more. They appear friendlier. And guess what? We find them more attractive. Ever been in love with your doctor and you think it's because he's all good looking, but it's actually because this white coat is a real thing. Many women, when they go to the doctor's office, and there's a white coat in the office, their blood pressure goes up, which I find really interesting, even though they have normal blood pressure. This happens to me all the time. I go to the doctor, my blood pressure is fine. I see the doctor, my blood pressure goes up, okay? And, and so this is a real thing, and we have to keep this in mind when we, see the, when we go see the doctor. Why? Because that puts us here, and they're here. And we want to get here, right? They're above, we're below, and we want to get here. But when we walk in and we see the Dr. Rocha, we're, we see this coat. We're already in, in, in what I call, you know, behind the eight ball. Okay, so we want to get in front of the eight ball. I don't even know what these, these, these atoms are. But anyway, we just want to make sure that we are in power, right? So, so the white coat works against us. So we have to be aware of that. It's like a flashing white light that we start to believe and trust everything the doctor says, and then we lose ourselves. And the most important thing that we can do in a doctor's office, and I'm reading some of my notes, is actually listen to your inner voice and your inner guidance and your intuition, because it does not lie to you. And the moment that we go against it is the moment that we get screwed in so many ways. Because I have a thousand, actually, I have 14,000 stories about the Dr. Rose Show. If you've been on the Dr. Rose Show, please type in yes, because I'm really curious. We have a ton of women here, hundreds and hundreds of women. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for watching on the replay. This is something that's really dear to my to my heart. And I'm so happy that my Pelvic Power Hour show is back on. You know, I took a little hiatus. I was recovering from a, a very severe fall that I have. So I'm back to helping everyone. But Let's go to step two. Everybody, actually, you don't have to write this down. Type in the word um, roadshow and you're going to get this. You don't have to write it down if you don't want to. But if you want to listen to this, hit the share button so you get it. Um, step two, be a client, not a patient. Repeat, be a client, not a patient. The first time I went to see a doctor for my pelvic issues, you know what he told me? He said, I wish that my wife had your pelvic floor strength. It wasn't that clean, but that's what he said, you know? And then he told me that I must be stressed out. Check this out, that I must be stressed out because I'm a working mom and I just had a baby and all I needed to do was go home and relax and everything was going to be okay. He gave me a prescription for what? Antidepressants. That was my first time. Very disheartening. In time, I was wearing adult pads. It makes me want to cry. Right? Adult pads. I was in pain. I couldn't sit. And still, this doctor had the nerve, the audacity, the balls to say that to me. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not unique to me. This happens all the time, so many times, that it makes me nuts, okay? So now this is how you're going to navigate that, right? Even if your doctor 
is ta participating with your insurance, you're still the client. You're still in the position of whether you want to hire this individual to be what? In partnership with you, to be one with you, to help and guide you, right? You want to be able to choose someone that you trust. So when you go in there, you got to listen carefully. Like when that guy, when that doctor told, told me that, you know what I did? I went home and I was like, something's wrong with me. This is what I thought, which was nuts. I blame myself. I'm like, oh, something must be wrong with me because he said that my pelvic floor was strong, that everything was fine. And yet I had all this pain and all this leaking and I couldn't even breastfeed my child. And so I went home thinking, holy moly, something is wrong with me. When in reality, something was wrong with him and I should have listened to my voice and I should never have let him speak to me in that manner. We cannot tolerate disrespectful comments from our doctors. And when they tell us something and we're the client, we have to listen to what? Our heart and our souls. Okay. This is Barbara. I had a doctor tell me I was attractive and had nothing to worry about, that he would go home that night and make love to his wife for thinking of me. That is really disgraceful. And by the way, this is something that's taught over and over again, right? We are in a situation where gender bias medicine is alive. And as women, we need to understand that we are in a situation where sometimes we are, we can become more powerless. So these tips that I'm giving you, although they seem simple, they really work. Okay. They really work. Thank you for sharing that. Cause that's really amazing. Okay. You are looking to hire them, and if they don't suit you, get the hell out of Dodge and find somebody else, right? Listen to that inner voice, right? Now, what I started doing, because after what the doctor told me, I was like, oh, shoot, something's wrong with me. I started under-reporting my pain. I started being like, yeah, look at me. I'm a superwoman. I can deal with it, right? Because I didn't want to rock the boat when I went to the doctor's office. I didn't want to come across as a pain in the ass, P-I-A. As a matter of fact, I was just listening to a podcast where they actually doctors put this into their notes, P-I-A, pain in the ass woman, which is absolutely insane that there's actually an acronym for that. Because when you start to um, stand up for yourself, right? In the Dr. Rose show, this is how you're going to be labeled. So you're going to have to be stronger, right? You're going to have to let it roll off your back and understand that this is not about you. This is about programming and traditions that have to be broken so that we can free ourselves and we can get the care that we need, right? So pay close attention to the way you're spoken to. And if you don't like it, say something. Now, step number three, Demand equal or better treatment. Type in the uh, Rose Show to get this. I wrote everything out for you, okay? So you don't have to even do it, okay? Um, and you'll get the checklist. And if you're on Instagram, the link is in the bio. Go get it there, okay? Now, you're not hysterical. You're not a whiny woman. And you don't have a psychogenic illness, okay? So if you find yourself not getting the treatment that you deserve, you have atypical symptoms, right? A lot of us have atypical symptoms, especially when we're suffering from women's issues, right? Now, these symptoms stump our doctors many times. Why? Because the, many of them are not educated in the field of pelvic health. And so they have no idea. And the pelvic floor, because it's such a deep connector to everything in the body, can express itself in 1,000 ways, right? But at the heart of many things, the pelvic floor needs to be evaluated. So just make sure that you're getting that done. And you need to know how to do this for yourself. We're not outsourcing our pelvic floors anymore, okay? Now, they may try to downplay your symptoms and give you a prescription just to get you out of the office, right? So it's important to stop and say, hey, do you understand? Have you had experience treating women with my condition? You got to stop it, okay? One of the things that I learned that I noticed after a while, when I would go to the doctor's office, when they're ready to dismiss you, I notice this the next time you go, they get up from their chairs right away. And that means the session is over, which is why it lasts seven minutes. But every time the doctor got up, I never got up. I would just sit there and be like, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving till I get my answers. I'm not leaving till I get what I need. 
And then that's how I started to take back my power. And that's how I started to end the Dr. Rose show. And that's how I started to find people who could work with me and help me heal. Right. And I did that through trial and error. And I put all this into all my online programs. You can go check them out. Um, so one thing that I want to make sure before I go to the next step is when a doctor misdiagnoses, gives you the wrong treatment, is not understanding it is your responsibility. Yes, it is. To do what? To go back and tell the doctor that. Don't just leave a Yelp review or a Google review. The doctor needs to know. The doctor wants to know. They're not all bad guys. Some of them just don't know. And they're just not educated. But you go back and you say, hey, listen, this prescription they gave me was not working. This treatment you gave me was not working. Then they go back and they start to open themselves up. And I think going back and having that very difficult talk with your physician is really critical. Okay, so that's that step. Now, step four is my favorite step. And it's my, actually my favorite word. It's say no to the doctor. Now, when I was on my Dr. Bro show, and by the way, I've treated over 14,000 women. I've overseen 52,000 healings in my healing center in New York City on Madison Avenue. And now I'm online because I want to bring the message more global and help more women all over the world. And that's my goal. Now, the first time that I got that antidepressant prescription, I didn't say no. I didn't research it. I didn't ask about side effects. Constipation, by the way, makes pelvic floor worse. I didn't ask about anything. You know what I did? I went to my pharmacy. I filled out the prescription. And then guess what? I took it. Right? And what I'm telling you right now is that we have to be able to say, no, I don't want this. I want a different way to heal. I want a different alternative. And that's actually going to be step five, right? And, and, and to make sure that before you even say yes to anything, injections, medications, oh God, all the things, that mesh, whatever it is, that you are doing your due diligence and you know risk versus benefit and does informed consent. There has to be informed consent. And that is lacking. So, say no until you know how the cards are being dealt to you. If you say yes right away without checking it out because you're sick of the leaking and you're sick about going to the bathroom and you can't sleep through the night or you have deep ache in the pelvis that doesn't let you connect to your partner, right? And these are real things that make us feel like there's something wrong with us, but in reality, it's just a physical issue, a pelvic floor issue that needs to be addressed. Because if you don't do that, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you may not be able to come back from. And I'm also talking about pain medications here. I was offered those two. And guess what? I took those two, okay? Now, step five is probably the most powerful step of all. Know the alternatives. Know that your lady parts and your bladder, right, and your menstrual cramps and your deep ache in the pelvis responds to natural, holistic healing medicine. And that, by the way, is the first line of defense. And that's what we, you should be getting a recommendation to. And on top of that, you need to know how to care for yourself. Next week, when I do this Facebook Live, I'm going to talk about relentless self-care and how important that is for 2020, okay? Now, um, uh, before I forget, type in the word Rochelle if you want to get this, okay? Now, let's review um, the five steps. Um, the white coat effect, you may want to put these up. Be a client, not a patient. Demand equal or better treatment. Say no unless you know what's, what the consequences are. Don't just take things to take them. And no alternative therapies. I'm a natural, holistic, pelvic floor, physical therapist. So if, you, if you're in my community and if you're watching me, then you know where I stand. Okay? But what I'm telling you is that incontinence, leaking, pelvic organ prolapse, and all these other issues 
can be healed with natural medicine. And we need to be aware of that, okay? Now, this is the way you get into the driver's seat when you are and how you get your doctor to listen to to you. It's really important that we understand that we want to be in connection with them. We want to be in partnership with them. We want to navigate the boat. You want to be the captain of your ship. You don't let somebody else drive your boat. Okay? That's not going to work. And I'm telling you, thousands of women I've seen this happen to. Okay? Now, I know it's hard to navigate the medical system, right? And I know it's hard to get your doctor to listen to you, but the only way you're going to do it is by implementing these steps and by trial and error and by listening to your inner voice and your inner guidance, because it doesn't lie to you. If something doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. And we shouldn't override that intuitive hit that we get many times, right? The system is rigged against women, but we have more power than we think we have. You set the stage for your health and you can bring about dramatic changes when you implement these five steps because we're not helpless. We're actually beautiful queens in control of our queendom. Now, Tell your stories and share your stories with all of us. Because when we share your stories and we understand, then we can change the world, right? We're not just changing the world for us. We're changing the world for all women to come and all women and for our grandkids and for our daughters and for our sisters and even for our moms who are suffering, right? That generation is a whole nother issue, right? Now, remember when you get misdiagnosed to go back to your doctor, this is important. When something is not working, go back and let them know. That way they can improve. The system can improve as well. And next Friday, I'll be back here at 1 p.m. And we're going to be talking about relentless self-care. And I have a whole thing on how to put yourself first on your own list. Okay. I want you to start 2020, you know, as a queen in control of your queendom. Knowing that deep down inside, we have more control than we've been led to believe that we have. And this is true. I'm an example of that. Thousands of women in my community are example of that. Okay. You probably know one or two women or more who are examples of that. And trust your inner voice and trust that you know what you need and you know and you know what you need and you know how you're going to get there, right? And start listening to your inner guidance. Thank you so much for being here. This is what I have for you today. Isa Herrera from pelvicpainrelief.com. Um, you can always go to my website. I have a ton of information there. It'd be really amazing. Type in the word Rose Show to uh, get the checklist. I'm very passionate about this. As you know, sometimes it still brings tears to my eyes right? Because sometimes it's hard to forget what you've been through. But I'm here to say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that the only way through and the only way out is by putting yourself first on your own list and listening to your inner guidance. Thank you. If you have any questions, put them in here because I'm going to go back and answer all the questions too. I will see. I don't see anything. I will see you next week. Well, we're going to go deep into one of my amazing topics that I love more than anything. And that's about how do you put yourself first on your own list, right? Every Friday at one o'clock, you can see me here unless something happens and I can't do it, right? I'm back on. Welcome to my Pelvic Power Hour show.